Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Um, this one is going to be a very vulnerable one for me. Uh, as many of you know, I have recently separated from my partner and um, honestly been experiencing a lot of deep grief and betrayal and all of the emotions that go along with those. I feel like I've been like deep underwater. It's kind of like the best way to describe it. Like when people are speaking to me sometimes, I just feel like they're speaking to me through just this wall of water <laughs> and I can hear them, but it's like really far away. That's kind of how I've been for the last couple of weeks. And for me, I like to really enjoy what I call my sacred silence. I really feel that when you go through something, and I believe that that breakup is is a form of, it's an emotional, it's an emotional death of processing what could have been, what you were to each other, letting go of who this person is in your life. It feels like death. There's a, the cycles of grief that you go through. And for me, I have experienced a lot of death in my life and I really feel that it's important to honor it and to take space for it. And that's what I've been doing. And at the same time, my ex-partner has chosen to do the opposite and make podcasts in a language that I don't understand. I don't speak German. Um, two days after we break up about our breakup um, and without talking to me or letting me know he was going to do this. So I just find out because he accidentally posts, he accidentally tags me in his Insta story promoting the podcast about him talking about our breakup. And then I get hundreds of messages from all of you lovely souls who care very much about us and care much about me and want to know that I'm okay. And I just felt like I was drowning even more because I wasn't ready to talk about it. And I was really sad. And I was really sad even more because my partner was using it as an opportunity to get <laughs> more attention online instead of honoring the grief. Um, and I know we all process grief differently, um, but I felt that I was very much grieving this breakup alone in the way that it has all gone down and the way that it's all been handled. And that makes me feel even more sad. Um, so this podcast is me really needing to like speak my truth. Um, and you know, I really didn't want to make it. <laughs> I, But I feel that it's really important for me to speak my truth, especially when there has been so much untruth put out there about me. And I also believe that it's really important for all of you beautiful women who listen to me to understand my story so that you don't have to go through it yourself. Because... Another reason why I haven't shared is because I've been feeling some shame around um, allowing myself to be treated with such disrespect and staying in a situation that was, that equaled me betraying myself from an emotional standpoint and a psychological standpoint because I knew that it was going against what I needed for myself and I spoke that and... Um, my partner, my ex-partner, uh, did his best to gaslight me. If you don't know what gaslighting is, it's when someone... The story of gaslighting is like, originally is this tale of a 
a man walking a woman down a, a hallway that's lit by lanterns. Like, you know, imagine like 14th century or something. And he's turning off the lights. Like he's like blowing out the lanterns as they go. And she's like, why is it getting darker? Why? What's going on? Where are you taking me? And he's like, it's not getting darker. What are you talking about? It's not getting darker. You're just making that up. It's all in your head. And of course, he leads her to somewhere that is a very bad, dark place. But anyways, gaslighting is that on an emotional level. It's where someone is taking your reality and making you feel like your reality is not real and it's not valid and making you feel a little bit like you're crazy. I have um, never experienced such levels of gaslighting as I have in this situation. And I say that growing up with someone who was a narcissist and was very much gaslighting me for most of my childhood. So the levels that I have experienced in the situation, I feel like someone could win a medal for them. <laughs> and it would be funny and comical if it wasn't so devastating. Um, so I just trying to adjust the mic a little bit. Um, so I am going to do my best to speak from my heart and to speak from my vulnerable, soft place. And at the same time, there has been so much hurt happening that I've experienced uh, in the situation that um, you might feel come through what I call sacred rage. And on a collective level, as women, we, we feel this a lot. We feel this for the collective. We feel this for past women, wh what they experienced. And we very much feel this in our own personal stories, the sacred rage of the masculine who is here and they are supposed to be supporting and protecting and providing and creating safety for us in this world. And a lot of times they are doing the opposite. And so that energy may come through as I share some of this story. And I just wanted to warn you about that, that that is my, not my intention, but also I feel it is very important for you to hear my story while I am still processing it because the feeling of authenticity is so real right now for me. There is no other option. And I feel that that can be very healing to experience and to feel and to hear. And also <laughs> because I am so tired of people speaking untruths about me <laughs> and presenting me to the world in a way that is not in alignment with who I am. And I know that that is also something that many of you sisters have also experienced. So I'm doing this for all of us. I know that I speak for a lot of women when I speak about the things that I have been through. So I'm just going to mention some things that I have experienced during and around this breakup. And I know that many of you have experienced this and I want you to know that you are not alone. Um... You know, it's really difficult when you and your partner make an agreement in order to create safety. When you are in an open relationship, all you have to build your trust for each other, all you have to create a reality of safety is the agreements that you make for each other. And when your partner breaks your agreement to use condoms, for almost the entire time that you were out of town with someone that you considered a sister of yours. And when you come home and the only reason why he said it, he, the only, his only excuse or reasoning behind breaking this agreement was because it felt right and that he feels like part of his mission is to share his sperm with women and also that, um, you know, flow state. It just felt right in the moment. And for him to do this for, you know, almost 10 days straight with a woman that you considered one of your sisters, 
uh, and she doesn't have birth control. She just she just tracks her period in an app, and he was coming inside of her for the whole time you were away. You know, that's really that's a really difficult thing to come home to. That's a difficult thing to come home to on very little sleep, um, and to have your partner act like you should just be okay with it because he feels like it's part of the mission to share his sperm. And when you speak up about this, that this is very much hurtful for you, this very much makes you feel betrayed, that makes you feel like he cheated on you, and his response is to tell you that you are being dramatic and that you just need to catch up to the reality that he is on because he is the one who is spiritually enlightened. <laughs> it is very normal to feel shocked and betrayed and to feel just devastated. That is the only word that I feel can describe. Describe how I felt. Um, especially, you know, it's really hard when this woman was your friend. Like you, th you thought they were that we were friends. You thought you were friends, and you realize at the moment that you and your partner are going through a rough time, and you leave the country. Her energy in the situation is to come in and and to try and take your partner as hers because you've spoken to her. You are friends. You understand that she doesn't want an open relationship. She wants to have a primary monogamous relationship and that she has done everything she can to make a love story with him and hook him energetically and sexually. And when you asked for the three of you to sit down and have a conversation like conscious adults and both of them refuse to do this but they continue to date each other while your partner lives in your house it's very normal to feel like what the fuck is going on like what reality did I just drop into and this is where some of my shame comes in that I didn't ask him to leave sooner that I just kept trying to make it work and this is, <laughs> I know that a lot of the women listening to this will understand what that means. We have this very deep programming <laughs> to just keep trying to make it work, especially when the man is gaslighting us and trying to make us seem like we are the reason why it's not working. And when he tells you, well, you know, I'm not attracted to you, when you are acting like this, when you're not okay with me having a second girlfriend, that makes me not attracted to you. And you just go along with it because you're trying to figure out what is upside, what is up right side up and upside down and what reality did you just come home to? And then you start to realize that you actually haven't felt emotionally safe for almost the whole time you've been in a relationship with this person. And this is just really showing you in a way that you can no longer look away what has been going on the whole time energetically and emotionally below the surface. And it's hard when your partner is trying to play you it's hard when your partner promises you, okay, I do not have to be romantic with her anymore. I can just be her friend. And you don't trust him anymore for obvious reasons. Even though he's saying all of these things, it's, you do not trust the words coming out of his mouth because he has broken your agreements and trust doesn't mean anything to him. It's just whatever feels good for him in the moment. His agreements don't mean anything to him. And so you go on his phone and check his messages. And while they are trying, saying they were being friends, they have been sexting the whole time. And it's really hard when you find your partner speaking badly of you to his new lover. 
and telling her that I can't handle their love and basically that they're going to have their own love story and I just need to catch up. And this is when you start realizing how much you have actually been betrayed. This is when you start realizing how much your partner is not on the same team as you. That he does not care about protecting your heart. All he cares about is himself and whatever pussy he is into in that moment. And that is a really harsh reality check. That is a very, that is like a bucket of ice being poured over your head. That is like someone slapping you in the face when you're asleep deep at night. That is like a knife through the heart. That is what that is like to realize that the man that you thought he was, maybe he never was that. Maybe he was just pretending so that he could get you. Maybe he's just finally going back to who he actually was the whole time. Um, And it's, oh my God. It's really hard when your partner tells you that if you're in public with around his new lover, he doesn't want to be romantic with you. The person that he has been dating and living with for a year and a half and calling his queen, he doesn't want to be romantic with you if his new lover is around. And he says it's in order to protect her heart. Like, what are you... I don't, I don't know... I don't know if someone at this point in the game, I felt like someone was playing a joke on me. Like I felt like someone was going to come into the room and be like, yeah, we're pranking you now because all of it got to be so ridiculous that I just started shutting down. Like I just, I couldn't talk anymore. (laughs) I couldn't function. I didn't know like what was going on. But I just knew that he needed to get out of my house. I didn't feel safe with him anymore in any way. I... (laughs) And the whole time when he's just saying that I'm being dramatic and when I tell him that all of this hurts me And he just tells me he no longer has to deal with my emotions and that he gets to just be himself and play. And that's all he cares about now. And that's when you really realize who he actually is. And then there was this moment where you realize like, oh my God, this was the best moment actually is when I realized, with many tears, I will say, and deep, deep relief, I don't have to do this anymore. Whatever this is, whatever bullshit is going on here, I no longer have to do this. I don't have to put up with you or her or any of this. You need to get out of my house. You need to get out of my house now. And this is when I realized how much I actually love myself and how much I choose myself and put myself first and protect myself and my heart. And everyone else can either catch up or they can get out of my life. And that is a very empowering thing to feel. Let me tell you. (laughs) That was probably the best moment in this whole situation. And you know, what I find so ironic is when he acts like I'm abandoning him by asking him to move out of the house. 
after everything he has just put me through. He acts like I, that he is the victim here. That I am kicking him out of his house and putting him on the street when he is moving into a bungalow and doing his own thing and, you know, planning his life with this new woman, whatever. And I'm just like, go, please go. Just leave me in peace. You have done enough. You have burned the bridge enough. Please, just go. And his response to that is just to keep making podcasts about us. And I just find this hilarious. Because... After all, this is, this is, this is probably the most funny thing to me, to me personally, I don't know about to anyone else, but from my perspective, and I have gone through a lot, okay? From my perspective, the most funny thing out of all of this is that he literally to this day still messages me thinking we are going to get back together. Uh, And... In those messages, he actually says that the reason why we have broken up is because of my trauma. And that once I heal my trauma, me, once I heal my trauma, I will realize that he is the perfect partner and I will want to get back with him. (laughs) Does anyone else think this is funny? Come on. This is... This has got to be, like, if you're just sitting back eating popcorn, listening to this or watching this, like, this has got to be the funniest part out of all of this. (laughs) That he thinks that I'm going to ever consider getting back with him. I told him, I don't know if I can even be your friend after this. Friends don't treat each other this way. They don't make podcasts two days after you break up, announcing it to the world and saying things that are private to the world, that you are not even ready for the world to hear that you've broken up. And when you tell them that you're not okay with this, for them to tell you, I don't care, I don't have to deal with your emotions anymore. And still you think we're going to get back together after everything that you have done. (sighs) I also realize that like, I really am so grateful that I don't have to live in his warped reality anymore. Since we have broken up, my community has just come in full full speed, strong, whatever you want to call it, like just to the max. And I realized they have been there this whole time. And the only reason why I was not around them was because of him, because he didn't, he doesn't actually like people. He just complains about them the whole time behind their back and then pretends like he's their friend when he wants to use them for something. Like, I thought this was the man I was going to like lead my new earth community with. I thought he was going to be like this mature, (laughs) grown-up mountain of a man. And what I realize is he's just a man-child. He's just the Peter Pan, doesn't want to ever grow up, views everyone as a shiny toy that he can play with until he gets tired of them, and then he discards them. And that's what's happening now. Like, his latest woman is... 10 years younger than him and he's telling my friend who he knows is going to tell me that he's not actually that into her but you know it's fun to play around and and that woman that 23 year old had a boyfriend and he broke up their relationship just so he could play with her like a toy and let's see how long that one lasts for it's like and that girl is best friends with the one that he was with when I was away. It's like he's just destroying relationships as he goes through them because he has no, he does not care about people's feelings. And I was like, wow, I don't have to deal with this anymore. I can, I can actually just be safe. And 
this is the next podcast I'm going to make for all of you is how important it is to have your value system and to make sure your partner matches your value system. Because for me, I realized is I felt very, very, very deeply unsafe for most of my relationship with this person. And of course, it wasn't physically unsafe. It was emotionally and psychologically unsafe because he is not grounded in this reality from an emotional standpoint. And when you are not grounded, you do not have morals. You do not have values. You just view everything as disposable. You view everyone as disposable. Yes, we are all connected. Yes, we are all one in the end, but we are individuals. We are humans. We are connected to the earth here. We are having a human experience. And people need to be valued for that. They need to be honored in that. Their feelings are valid. Valid. <laughs> it's just it's just so much. Dude, like I I sometimes go in between crying. And the crying is more because I feel, I really do believe that he tried to be the man he thought I wanted in order to be able to be in a relationship with me. Because when I met him, I, I was very clear about who I wanted to be with, and I told him it. And he, now I realize, was gaslighting me into believing that he was this. I didn't ask him to become this. I, I wasn't trying to make him into a project I women do not make men into projects do not date potential it doesn't work at the end of the day they just go back to who they actually are before they met you and my ex-partner knew this but he's very very good at playing a role that he feels he needs in the moment to get the shiny object that he wants to play with and at that moment, he wanted to play with me. And also at that moment, he, I thought he is like close enough in many ways to the man that I know that I'm meant to be with, the man that I saw on my first ever DMT trip, that I am taking responsibility for the fact that I projected the rest of it onto him. It's like I saw what I wanted to see. He created this illusion of who he said he was when I met him, and I filled in the gaps, and I take ownership for that. And then for the rest of our relationship, he was desperately trying to keep up that facade, and I think he got really tired of it at the end. I think he started to rebel. And so that's what the last six months have been between us, is him con saying the things, doing the things that he said words it was him rebelling against the man that he said he was in order to be able to match me in a relationship and you can see it now that he's back to his actual vibration and it makes me really sad because it's such a tired timeline we have so many men on this island that are what we call peter pan men like the ones that don't want to grow up, they don't want to take any responsibility. They only view women as objects of pleasure, you know, like the pleasure feminine. So the pleasure feminine archetype is, is part of all of us women, and it's beautiful. It's the maiden, you know, it's the one that is seducing you in, that is like, you know, getting you into the bedroom. But that is one part of us. And there's a lot of women here on the island that first come into their embodiment of their sexuality and they get a little stuck in the loop of the pleasure feminine. And then you have all these men here on the island who are stuck in the loop of the Peter Pan, the man-child who doesn't want to grow up. And these two find each other a lot and they do loops together. And this is what he's doing now. And it's okay because now I see him and I don't want him. And it's more that I am grieving the man that I thought he was. And I'm grieving being, and I'm grieving not trusting my intuition, actually, because I could feel it, especially the last six months, that he actually wasn't the man I thought he was. And I kept bringing it up with him in different ways. And he kept 
gaslighting me and telling me it was my trauma. If someone is using your trauma as a weapon, like when you bring up something that is bothering you in a relationship with your about your partner and then his response to say, oh no, it's actually your trauma. You're the reason why this, and they take no responsibility for what you just brought up. Run. Run away from that relationship, please. This is my advice. If people are not taking responsibility for their actions and for who they are and how they're showing up in a relationship, if they cannot have a conscious conversation, it is now your responsibility to decide whether you are going to stay in a relationship with someone like that. And I think that's where I was saying I feel some shame because I know better. I have been in many relationships in my life and I grew up with like (laughs) a master narcissist who is master at manipulating and gaslighting people. So it's like I got this on the ground training from childhood, which in another way makes it so sometimes it's my blind spot because I'm so used to being gaslighted and and manipulated and controlled um, that sometimes it can like slide in, you know? And this is something, this is our shadow side. This is what we all have to look at in different ways. It's like, how were we treated by our parents? How did we see them treat each other? Are we playing out these scenarios in an unconscious way in our current dynamics? Because the, your soul had you born into those dynamics in order for you to learn a lesson, but not in order for you to recreate it. You don't need to take on your parents' karma. That's just lame. We're here to build a new earth, not to replay loops from childhood. I always say, like, I don't want to spend my adult life trying to get over my childhood. Like, I have a mission. I know that I'm a star seed here. I know that I'm here to lead us into the new earth vibration. Whoever is coming with me, let's go. And all of these, this is why I'm disappointed. It's like all of these man children, it's like we need men who are in their masculine and understand how to be a good man and understand that what that means is to protect and provide and create safety for the women around them, not to use them as pleasure objects and discard them when their emotional reality no longer feels good for you to deal with. If a man only wants to deal with your pleasure side and your happy side, he doesn't deserve to be with you. It's, you know what I'm realizing? A lot of this falls on us women. We are so desperate for men's attention. It's like, it's almost like we feel like energetically we're crawling through this desert And we're just like, please, someone give me attention. Oh, is he kind of a good man? Okay. And instead of like waiting and holding to our standards and holding to the value of who we know we are, which is drinking from an oasis of clean water, that's a healthy masculine. We we find this like puddle of dirty water in the desert and we're just like, he kind of has a good man. Maybe he has some potential. Let me drink. Yeah, let me see if I can expand this into something that is actually worthy. Fuck that. Yeah, like fuck that. Or you can hold to your standard and realize that you are amazing. You deserve to drink from the very best waters from men who are clean energetically and are there to protect your heart and actually do it. Don't just say it. Don't blame you for your trauma. They're there for you. They are showing up every single day, consistently honoring your agreements, consistently creating opportunities for you to trust them and to feel safe with them. (sighs) Let's take a deep breath on that one. Um, so 
you know, this is the thing that I, my, my big lesson in all of this is that, you know, we all make mistakes. Everyone does. I have made so many mistakes in past relationships, especially around openness, especially around, you know, making sure my partner's heart is protected while I am in connection to someone else. And at the same time, you know, in those past relationships, there was consequences when I made those mistakes. And there was like, you know, I hurt people and I owned it and I said sorry and I was accountable. And what I have been having a very hard time with in this dynamic with my ex-partner is that he takes no responsibility. When I asked him if he was actually sorry for breaking agreements, he said, I'm sorry that I broke your agreement. And I said, what? It's not my agreement. We decided this together. Like, this, is a, this, was, this was us being on the same team. And this is when I realized that he does not view us as on the same team. He's on only a team with himself. And that's really all he has capacity for. And it was very sadly like a train wreck to watch him trying to no lo- not only be on the same team with me, but also another woman. Like polyamory is expert level relationship dynamics. And this man can barely hold a relationship with himself, let alone two other women. But for us women, who especially for us who love our men, when we do let them in all the way, and we are trying so hard to make it work, the most important thing is that when trust is broken, and when boundaries are crossed, and when they hurt us over and over again, that we have consequences I feel like this is the real reason why a lot of these man children continue along that path is because no one tells them no. They just keep doing it and everyone just goes along with it. But if the women in the in the dynamic was like, actually stop. I no longer agree to this. I deserve to be treated better then the man would have to wake up eventually. And this is an activation for them. This is how they grow into good men. If everyone is like, no, actually, I don't want to play the game with you on a level that is not serving me, that is not honoring who I am. I will no longer be a toy for you to play with. I don't think anyone has ever told my ex-partner no in a way where he actually still wants the thing. Like he still wants to be in a partnership with me and it's never going to happen. And for him, I hope this is an activation for him to come to some realization for his own sake. I have come to my realization of what I am owning in this dynamic and who I choose to be in response to this. And my heart is grieving like I said, the man that I thought he was. And of course, is grieving the life that we were deciding to build together. You know, it's just like, it just, it just like blows my mind that he literally had everything with me. Like we had a house, a dog, a cat, a whole community in person, online. We are building things together. And all he cares about is the latest young pussy he's gonna fuck you know like what (laughs) what and again like I am actually someone who's totally cool with openness if I feel like we're on the same team and if you ask him he'll say oh well Brittany actually was never okay with me being with women because of her trauma and that's not true because I have been in past open relationships where I was okay with my partner being with other women the reason why I was not okay with my last ex being with other women is because he has this energy he is showing now. This energy was below the surface the whole time. And that energy made me feel unsafe, not only for myself, but also for the fact that he is leading a community and there is a huge power dynamic. There's already a power dynamic when you are 10 years older than someone 
And there's another power dynamic if you are famous and you are leading the community. And if you're going to use that to help and to guide, amazing. If you're going to use that to use someone as a shiny toy and fuck them and then discard them when it no longer serves you, that is not okay with me. I no longer have any part in what he does. I no longer have any say in in the situation. And at the same time, of course, I have feelings about it, you know? It's like my biggest goal in life is to protect the women around me. And I thought that this man was someone I could vouch for as a good man. And I don't know if he is anymore. And I think that might be one of the things that makes me the most sad. And I'm holding space for him to grow into that. I hope that he does for his own sake and for his community. Because we have so many examples. This is what I'm saying. It's a tired timeline he's going down now. Because we have so many examples already of men using their power just to fuck women. When we are, we have so many people who need guidance. Everyone is waking up right now spiritually and dropping into their bodies and they need guidance. They need someone to help them. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here for the mission. I'm here to guide and to lead and to empower all of us that we are all leaders on the inside we need to all step into our full power because each one of us has a part to play in this beautiful game that is unfolding in front of us so yeah i (laughs) there's so much more i could say i just I guess I just want to say that I'm really grateful for my people right now. Like, I have a girlfriend, her name's Anna, and she has her own place here on the island, and she loves me so much that when my partner, my ex-partner moved out, she moved in, literally just to take care of me. Because she said, I, <laughs> she's Russian, and she's like, just because you are sad, I need to cook for you, I need to clean for you, and I need to be here for you. And I was like, I love you. (laughs) And it's just so amazing. And now, right now, I have two more friends who are staying with us um, because they're leaving town soon. And so there's four of us here and Afro and my cat Shadow. And it's like, you know, we had a play party on Saturday. We had a music night on Tuesday. And I've been doing women's events, women's sisterhood events every Thursday. And it's just like, I am back to being who I was before I dated this man, which is a community leader and the hub of the community. This is what this space has always been. And it just feels so good to come back to myself and my essence because when we were together, he doesn't like people. And so it was like... I. Yeah, I don't want to go into all that. All I'm saying is I'm really happy that I'm back to myself. And I also feel at the same time that I could probably like sleep for a week because it was like we broke up and then he just kept causing more drama. And then I hosted a play party and and a couple other events. And now we're here and... I was so excited to make this podcast because I've missed all of you so much and I've missed sharing my vibration with the world because I know that my voice matters and it counts just like all of yours does as well. And if I can put myself out there and put my voice out there, I hope it inspires all of you to keep being your unique puzzle piece in the timeline and to be bold and to be in your full power. So it feels really good to be making these again, and I'm going to be making a lot more. And I'm learning how to... um, I always knew how to like record it audio, but now I'm learning how to edit my video. So if you're watching this visually, it's because I've learned how to edit it. Thank you, Josh, my friend, for helping me. Um, And yeah, I just... I feel very... um, 
I feel very in alignment. I think that's what I want to say at the end of this is that like I, from the moment my ex-partner moved out, literally like so much synchronicity, so much magical connections, so much financial abundance, like just flowing. It's like the universe is like, we are here. Mama Copan Young's like, you're my daughter. I love you. Here you go. Here's this, here's that. And that sometimes has like brought me to my knees with joy and appreciation and just so much happiness. Um, yeah, so I'm really grateful. And of course, I'm at the same time equally still very heartbroken. So when people ask me, how am I doing? I'm like, it's like a wave. It's just like up, down, sideways, who knows? at every given moment where I'm at but I'm here and I'm gonna keep going uh because that's what we do um I was telling a friend the other day that like honestly the reason why I've like stayed in this timeline for so long is because I'm just really stubborn (laughs) and I want to see what happens and how it plays out um and I hope to give you some of that resilience that we have to keep going we have to figure it out if for no other reason besides the fact that let's just see what happens next if for no other reason so um that's what i have for now let me know if you have any questions and i'm very excited to make the next episode about more about this I feel like this is going to be a whole series about all the things I have learned through this journey Um, and I'm sending you all so much love and thank you for being there for me thank you for all of your messages of support and love and I've enjoyed giving all of you human design readings as well and coaching sessions I'm here for you so reach out if you ever need anything okay sending you so much love have a beautiful day bye